And secondly, you may see me shifting my weight a lot. You may see me stretching, cracking my back, or even popping my knees. I wanted to mention that because I served in the military for a decade, and the hostile work environment, the long hours, the lack of sleep have all resulted in me having back issues, leg issues. But I was lucky. I was lucky in the fact that, irregardless of me not being told that I could apply for a Department of Veteran Affairs claims for these issues, I, I, I was lucky that I um, had issues that sprung up almost immediately after I got out of service. I was lucky that I my first claims were all denied. I was lucky that I had to become a resident expert in the Department of Veteran Affairs regulations so I could win my claims. You know, before 2006, veterans did not, were not afforded the same level of legal representation that you could find in any other, that you could find in any other legal jurisdiction. So by and large, it fell on us to defend ourselves against the Department of Veteran Affairs, or the VA. But this is where Military Veteran Solutions comes into play. We are an organization that was put together to appeal and represent veterans through their claims process against the Department of Veteran Affairs. But before we get into any more specifics, we want to introduce ourselves. My name is Tito Medina, I'm a Navy veteran. My name is Rose Price, I'm a Navy veteran. My name is John Perkins, and I'm an Army veteran. My name is Paul Lindeke, and I'm a Marine Corps veteran. My name is Sarah Yao, I'm an veteran. Now, Military Veteran Solutions is not something that was thought up in an academic setting. It's not something that was thought up in this classroom. It was brought about by the necessity that its founders, Aries Robinson and myself, saw as we've been working within the veteran community for the past four years, providing outreach and crisis management. We realized that, by and large, veterans do not have the proper representation whenever they put in a, appeals or have to uh, um, fight their, their denial, denied claims. But to discuss uh, the background of how military veterans would actually do this, my friend John here will talk to you about uh, the industry background. Thank you, Tito. How you doing, everyone? Now, veterans, when they need legal representation for, uh, for the purpose of filing an appeal for a claim that was either denied or they did not agree with us uh, through the Department of Veteran Affairs, they have three legal options. They can go to an attorney, they can go to a, uh, a veteran service office rep, or they can go to a claims agent. Now, attorneys generally want one third of the veteran's lump sum payment that they receive once their claims are approved, which is a lot considering that they are not uh, the subject matter experts in uh, veteran case law. Now, veteran uh, service office rep offer free service. However, this ends up, uh, this results in uh, an increased caseload and the inability to provide the personalization that they, uh, that they need within their individual cases. Now, there are 11 claims agents throughout the state of Washington, of which four uh, provide appeal representation, and of them, four are uh, two are the founders of Military Veteran uh, Solutions. Now, strength within our organization is that we're only charging 20% of the, uh, of the veterans' lump sum uh, payment that they receive at the end of the case. Uh, that being said, that's 13% less than our competition. Not to mention, we have two agents that are well established within the community, uh, have uh, high recommendations amongst the uh, officials throughout the Department of Veterans Affairs. Uh, and uh, they have the veterans' best interest in mind. Now, a, uh, a weakness is that we 
We know that we have to wait about 18 months before we can hear something back from the Department of Veterans Affairs on a decision in the country. Uh, not to mention, I would start contingent on the uh, on us winning the case. However, we have the opportunity to be the first appeals owned uh, service provider uh, to help our veterans in their appeals claim, not only in King and Pierce County, which is our target market, but throughout the entire state of Washington. Uh, with that being said, there will be some that, uh, that pose a threat by trying to offer similar services. However, our commitment to our veterans uh, to help, you know, help us win above those uh, and, and keep us you know, being the first choice to the veterans uh, when they need to appeal representation. Now, there are approximately 600,000 veterans in the, in the state of Washington, of which uh, approximately 200,000 reside in King and Pierce County. Now, according to a VA spokesperson, there are about 30% of the uh, claims adopted, uh, 30% of the initial claims are denied when the veteran files them. With that being said, that's about 60,000 veterans that need our help. With that, I turn it over to Chito who will discuss the, uh, the market analysis portion of our business plan. Thank you very much, John. So um, our marketing plan is very simple, to target and reach veterans within the Puget Sound <laughs> area, King County and Pierce. We're going to do that through three different vehicles. Um, local newspapers, local community newspapers, an internet presence, and grassroots community event building. It's something that we uh, have a history with. Next slide. Now, we've isolated two different um, local publications, one that uh, uh, targets the South King County area, the next one that uh, targets Joint Base News Court and its surrounding areas. Now, Joint Base News Court being uh, two military bases in one, um, we're more than certain that there is a large amount of veterans around it. Next slide. We intend to put together an awesome website. The website will convey two things, what we do and that we are veterans, assisting other veterans. We will also put together a Facebook page that will convey and document all the different events and outreach that we provide to the community. Um, lastly, we're going to be using Facebook ad services and Google ad services um, to steer uh, people to both the company website and the Facebook uh, page. Next slide, please. Grassroots organizing. As John was saying uh, a few moments ago, one of our strong, uh, one of our strengths in the SWOT analysis is that we have a history of putting together veteran events within this area. This is from a photo from a few weeks ago uh, for a Veterans Free Haircut Day that we were able to put together. We, we believe that uh, being disinvolved in the community, first of all, is really good because service providers, they know what we do, they know who we are. Individuals know what we do, who we are, and also it's generally good for the veteran community in this area. Um, and with that, I turn it over to my friend Paul. Thank you, John. Are you, uh, you know. Uh, I will be talking about the operations plan starting with the organizational structure. The current structure is there will be two senior agents and one part-time administrative assistant. The reason being is because our client base will be small. Military Veteran Solutions will intend to establish a veterans training program that will train agents in the process of assisting uh, veterans. Now, over the next two years, they will be bringing in two uh, veterans uh, each year to train under the two senior agents. And they will uh, take an exam at the end of each year to become accredited agents that way they can assist veterans in appeals. This will bring the total number of agents in 2016 to six. Uh, and also in 2016, we will be making the uh, administrative assistant full time because of the increase of the client base. Now, we go on over the process flow. Was at first the um, the vets are the, the agents at Military Veteran Solutions. They will assess the veterans when they come in and determine uh, if they have. If, um, they will determine if there is. 
there, they need to determine if the initial claim has been uh, denied. Now, what happens is they need to check if there's grounds for uh, an appeal. Now, what happens is the uh, the veterans. Um, The veterans, uh, what happens is we need to find out if their the reason why they were denied is valid. Um, if the if they were if it was not valid, then the agents will be able to assist the veterans in the process of the appeals. Uh, now another thing is the required documentation. They need to make sure that they have the required documentation necessary to file an appeal. If they do not have the required documentation, then the agents will be able to assist the veterans in getting that required documentation so they can file appeal. And then after that, it's basically playing a waiting game to basically uh, wait until the decision has been made. Uh, if the appeal has been granted, then the uh, process is over. However, if the appeal is not granted, then the agents have to find out why the appeal was denied and get the required information necessary to refile the claim until it is granted. And uh, now we talk about the operation operation expenses. Uh, <coughs> agents at Military Veteran Solutions has analyzed the operating expenses and has determined that the employment costs will be the highest costs uh, in the first five years. In 2018, the amount of sales profit realized will increase to the point where we will be able to increase the employees' uh, salaries. Uh, Military Veteran Solutions has also analyzed the other operating expenses, such as rent, insurance, internet, and telephone. Now, for Military Veteran, Military Veteran Solutions, their purchases uh, in the first five years will be for the office and technology equipment that will be necessary to run the business. Now, this will comprise of office furniture, uh, computers, printers, fax machines, and a copier. And uh, due to the lack of uh, expertise that uh, military veteran solutions will, would be, they've decided that we will be outsourcing our accounting and IT services. And the reason for this is this reduces the risk of errors and costs that are associated with having a full-time staff uh, for these services. Now I will be uh, turning it over to Rose, who will be talking about the uh, funding. Sorry. So Military Veteran Solutions evaluated our expenses and our cash flows for the first five years to determine what investment would be required to meet our startup. So the two founders, Tina Medina and Aries Robinson, they have each secured $30,000 to invest in the company. John Paul Seven and I are each going to donate 10, 000, or invest $10,000 to the organization for a total of $100,000 internal investment. With this, we still require $250,000 to support our business operations until our profits meet and exceed our expenses. We, we intend to request that as a stratified investment with a distributed in $50,000 increments every three to six months. So Tito and uh, Paul both described some of the expenses that Military Veteran Solutions took into consideration. This table displays every expense that we thought of that could relate to our business model and took into consideration the development of our financial plan. So one of the hardest things to understand about this business model is the time frame. So the process actually begins when the veteran files their initial claim. We're not involved at that point, but that's when the timeline begins. So when they file their initial claim, it can take approximately six months for a decision to be made. When that decision is made, if it's denied, that's when Military Veteran Solutions can step in, aid in finding all necessary documentation, and help the veteran file their appeal. Now an appeal, <coughs> time period for being denied or granted varies based on multiple factors. But in order to develop sales projections, we developed a standard of 18 months. This makes the retroactive compensation period 24 months. So for sales projections, the other two things that are very important is the, appeal, the percent of the appeals that we filed that would be granted and what compensation rate they would be granted at. So we developed two models, a conservative model and an optimistic model. 
The conservative model states that we will win 30% of the cases we file, and that of those 30%, they will be rated at a 10%, 30%, and 100% monthly compensation rate average. The optimistic model is based on winning 70% of our claims, and those being granted at an overall average of all monthly compensation rates. As you can see, both models show optimistic growth through 2018. An average of these two models is what was used in developing our financial statements. And with that, Severin is going to discuss our financial statements. With cash flow. We took a look at cash flow, so our cash receipt and the cash investment is made. And as we see, we have a handy balance of cash flow for 2016, 2017, 2018, show a consistent growth. The income statement. The income statement. The first two years, the entire video and solution show a negative net profit. But after the third year, 2016, 2017, and 2018, the entire video solution have a dramatic increase net profit due to, due to the number of agents the entire video solution used to file the claims. The balance sheet. The balance sheet of 2018 is of metal solution is essential component of cash. The cash is our essential asset because the fixed asset is only telephone, laptop, the office equipment, equipment. And our liability in 2018 is just tax liabilities. We have no count liabilities and no long liabilities. We break even. In 2016, military solution should be able to break even to make in 2018 between the third, the second and the third quarter, military veteran solution should be able to reach the break even. And the model you the method you use to, to analyze this is the annual expenses of meter vision solution and the re monthly revenue, which is, with our model is constant. So we will reach our break even with a different number we could see on the table. The S is strategy. The exit strategy of military video solution have two options. For each investor, the two options is proposed. And you can see the rate of return on investment each investor will have depending on the choice he <coughs> wants to make. First option or second option. If you choose to make a first option, you have a Level of rate is used to make a second option, we have a number level of rate. And it's important to highlight that the angel investor are among of the board. So all decisions made by the and solution make their, their involved in this decision. So if we have to increase our expenses or decrease or allocate it to another expenses or mix of choice, angel investment is involved in this decision. The Schwab Foundation for Social Entrepreneurship described military veterans' solutions and intentions perfectly. They stated, while profits are ideally generated, the main aim is not to maximize financial returns for investors, but to grow the social venture and to reach more people in need. To most disabled veterans, receiving disability compensation isn't a want, it's a need. It helps them gain financial stability and enhances their lives. Military Veteran Solutions offers you the opportunity to be both socially responsible and to gain financially. The business valuation conducted in Military Veteran Solutions identified that by year five, the company's fair market value will be over $2.7 million, with a 95% return on investment. So what we ask for today, we ask for your support. Your support in helping us realize our goals by investing in Military Veteran Solutions. And in doing so, you will make today Veterans Day. I would now like to open the floor for questions. Yes? Hi, 
Yes, I have a couple questions. Um, I didn't see it in the executive summary, and I, I see that you're using cases as kind of a break-even analysis, which seems to make sense, but I'm not sure, how are you collecting the money? I, did, I don't understand, like, who's paying you. So I'll take that one. When, the, when a veteran comes to the organization and they decide they want to use us for representation, there's actually a form we're required to fill out and submit to the VA on what our fee structure is going to be, which ours is going to be an established 20% fee structure. So when we submit that letter to the VA, if the appeal is granted, then the veteran would get their 80% and the, the organization would be automatically distributed at the 20% compensation level. Okay. And when you were talking about the time frame, I mean, you, it's when they walk in your office is when the time, I mean, from the veteran's perspective, it starts when he applies for the benefit. But from your business standpoint, he gets denied and calls you up. I mean, that's where you start your relationship. That's where our relationship starts, but the, the premise of the slide was that the compensation begins as soon as they file their initial claim. So oh, it, I see. Because so it's going to be a retro. It's going to be a retroactive compensation. Oh, okay, so more. realistically, if they file their I gotcha. claim. Okay. Yeah. And that's very typical, right? That yes. it's retro. Yes. Yes. Okay, so I've, <clears throat> I ran some numbers into your 2018. Um, you got an employee cost on the order of 600,000, which on a 20% commission structure means you need to be grossing about $3 million a year in cases. Well, the, the 20% is for the veteran to us. Yeah. The, the fee structure was based. Yeah, but I mean, you know, if you're gonna if you're gonna pay six hundred thousand in employee costs, you got to be generating three three million dollars in judgments in order to get your 20% equal six hundred thousand. But which just uh, if look at your break even thing, that's like on your high end optimistic. You know, the, the the that's, how much, that's, how much the that's how much you're paying. Yeah, people. the 20% is how much we charge the veteran for the service. Those are the salaries of our employees. Well, so yeah, yeah, yeah. Employees yeah, I know. Time. So, but I mean, you have to pay your employees out of your revenues, right? Yes. And your revenues are twenty percent of the judgments you get. Yes. Which means your revenues have to be five times higher than what you pay your employee. I mean, your judgments have to be five times higher than what you pay your employees. Yes. Does that make sense? It makes sense. So, so in 2018, I'm seeing you need to get three million dollars in judgments in order to pay your employees that much. Am I missing something there? Absolutely not. And okay. we will definitely evaluate the uh, employment costs that uh, okay. we were looking at the amount of revenue and net profit we we're going to have remaining. Yeah, well then on, then on your other slide, you showed three million, but that was like your extreme, you know, positive projection. Are we talking about our optimistic model? Yeah, your optimistic Sorry. model was about... And honestly, our optimistic model, I know I call it optimistic, but I very much feel it's realistic. So we're saying that that's 70% granted. I realistically feel that the organization will have 100% granted. And how do you modify your plan if the numbers come in more on the conservative side of that? Because you're going to be very much in the red at a $3 million employee or $600,000 employee cost if, uh, if your revenues are on the conservative trend line. So we, we based on an average between the two to be able to project out, and, but realistically, we will be more towards the optimistic section. We just wanted to provide a conservative view. Would you scale? The amount of employees that you hire? Most definitely. That's one of the reasons we weren't going straight to four employees in 2015, because if any of our avenues don't work out between our marketing and between our operations, then we would not increase to four more or two more employees in 2015. So we will be evaluating how the business grows and how the functions work before we increase salaries and increase employee base. Definitely. Right now, this is our current office location. We're in downtown Tacoma. So about 10 miles away, we have JBLM. 
On the other uh, side, going towards Kisap, we have the na naval base, and we also, up north in Everett, there's also another naval base there. There's so four military bases in the area with two uh, VA hospitals uh, also. Like, um, the VA hospital is here, another VA hospital there. You have uh, another base up here. I tend to believe that being that there's four military bases in the area, two VA hospitals, that there's still going to be veterans in this area up until at, at least the next 25, 30 years. But will the claims continue to grow? Will the claims also start declining as the uh, oh. initial claims? Ha ha! Yes. Initial claims, but initial yeah. claims... Um, yes, the veteran, Vietnam veteran population are dying off. True. But we still have uh, Iraq, Afghanistan, and Gulf War veterans, and that is pre uh, your, your preposition is saying that there will be no further wars in America's history, uh, in the future, I should say. And I, I kind of see it like, yes, we're scaling down our military. We are doing that right now. But I still believe because of the newer technologies, like there's more helmets or more uh, padding that they use. Because of that, people live through these issues, and they're actually more hurt now than they would have been 20 years ago. So yes, we have a smaller force. But the force, when they when they become veterans, you know, from the military to the veteran side of the house, they're going to have more issues. Um, I, I I suspect that just because of the, the technology that we're using and the fact that the I've I've done I'm on a governor's board for veteran affairs. I've ran a outreach and crisis management program for veterans, and I see it. The younger ones that are coming back have more issues. Nerve, uh, neurological issues, physical issues, than Vietnam veterans. The survival rate's higher, but the injury. Rate, yes. Their survival. Yeah. The survival so we're going to have a small disability claims if they don't survive are not very big. Yeah. But yeah. if they yeah. survive. Yeah. 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 You don't have to have been a wartime veteran to have been injured. There's, so there's, there's a lot of people who get injured in training or they get injured at a shore duty here in the United States. So really the, the initial filing of a disability claim is more in regards to injuries within the military and not directly connected to wars. And also it will be higher for wars, most likely. I mean, I need to say that, but that's reality. Mm -hmm. But there are still uh, disability compensation claims that come in from the standard operating business. Mm -hmm. And family members can also apply. They can also, if the, if the um, I have a question, maybe you, you, you answered this and I, I didn't hear. Right now, of the decline, we know that they're denied 30% of the time. Mm -hmm. Of the appeals today, mm -hmm. wh how many are, what percentage are denied on appeal today? Just in all sources, I mean, not your company, but just all around. The most recent data I can find was from 2009, and okay. it was actually a study on equitable distribution of compensation. And at that point, they were saying that about 30% of claims were being denied. So and that number, too, is representation. But, but of the ones denied. that are denied and appealed. I'm talking what, about appeals. They were the, of the appeals, 30%, 30%. were only 30% were so denied. So it's almost like the same percentage applied to both. Okay. So their initial claim gets denied, and of those, 30%, 30 so your number of 70%, if you're just as good as other people in the market that do this, then the optimistic view is a good view. I mean, if, a, if I'm understanding that correctly, so you said 70 was your optimistic, and 70 is what all, all appeals get now anyway. So you should be able to do that. If you're adding value, maybe even higher. In many situations, the veterans... The veterans, um, since they don't have the proper representation, when they go for that uh, uh, appeal, they don't have the proper paperwork in it, they don't have the proper uh, evidence to go with it, they don't understand the process flow. And in understanding a system, that aids you a whole lot in putting that 30% to at least 50, if you're going to look at it like that. They will deny them for one missing piece of paper. Mm -hmm. And that's where our job is to make sure that they're not missing that piece okay. of paper, and it goes through the first time. And who, what are the other types of players in that in the market doing the kind of thing that That's you do? Right. Obviously, any I law like firm. I would more on that. Like, uh, another a law firm would be one well, that a veteran could go to if he was right. Behind. I mean, and like I mentioned, I mean, attorneys do, but once they uh, attorneys handle a vast amount of sure. different cases and stuff, and because of that, because they view the veterans as not being their big money maker, uh, they don't keep up with the uh, with the case law, you know, for veterans, which means that 
they don't have the expertise to, in order to, to I understand you're yeah, differentiating yeah. both by your experience being solely with this product, you know, the veterans issues, yeah. and we, being, we one thing being we staffed by veterans no, on I, top of that. I can explain it further. Um, there are three different persons that can uh, represent veterans within the VA system, one being attorneys, but all that really means is that an attorney filled out a one uh, uh, a form, a, a two-page form, sends it into uh, the VA system, shows that he's an attorney, and they given them, they accredit him on the spot. The next person is the person who's working for something like the, the VFW, the American Legion, right? So a veteran service officer who's working, who's been accredited to working specifically for the VFW or the American Legion. But the issues with, with the VFW, the American Legion, is that they have thousands, literally thousands of veterans that are trying to either do the initial uh, service connection paperwork or the appeal paperwork. And when you go around and you see all the different American Legion halls and things like that, there is no one in that building who's getting paid. That's all a voluntary position. There's only about seven voluntary, uh, excuse me, seven paid positions per service agency in the state. So if you start thinking like, wow, um, one veteran service officer can have a caseload of, of three to 4,000 persons, mm -hmm. there is no way that you that, that that service agency can legitimately say that they take the time to get to know the person, to understand, to say, when you go to your doctor, I really need you to speak to him and say this. Because if you don't say it like this, and he doesn't write a letter that says this, they're going to turn it down. Then, and they won't take the time to review the document once the doctor uh, uh, produces it. Because we need to make sure, the first time, that it goes through. Because this system... It's a great system when it works, but when it doesn't, it takes years for it to, to for the paperwork to process correctly. And many times it might be because the the statement is lacking um, in, in such a way that the VA person can say, "Well, that's that's not a definite statement," and it happens all the time. The third person or the third type of person that can represent veterans are accredited agents. Me, I took a test at the Department of the VA. Um, I'm nationally accredited to be able to assist and represent veterans as a lawyer does within any VA system anywhere in the nation. Let me, let me draw a uh, let me draw a, a similarity. Uh, what, what, what am I trying to say? Mm -hmm. There's three people who can represent a client before an IRS court. One is an attorney, one is a certified public accountant, and the other is an, an agent enrolled to practice before the IRS. They are synonymous with an enrolled agent. Mm -hmm. Bob, do you have a question? More about um, a question or an observation or a comment. Universal, thank you. Thank you for standing in front of us. We know it's difficult, um, you know, but uh, you know, you're going to have to do this in front of employers, so yeah. we don't feel too bad tonight about doing this to you. Uh, the, second, the second question I have is actually not about your presentation. It's about um, the program, this program. So I want you to think back real quick and maybe just you know, just go right down the line. What what course did you take throughout your you know your MBA program that um, 